Hey, what's up guys? Mr. Ipoc here. Um, this is just a follow-up lesson to today's lesson. Today in class, we did comparing irrational and rational numbers. So this lesson, this video, is just a follow-up. Just in case you get home, you're looking at your notes, and you're like, well, this doesn't make sense to me. Hopefully this video can help you out and that you can get a better understanding and a better comprehension of comparing rational and irrational numbers. And also for parents, if you're just like, well, I see your notes, Mr. Ipoc, but... Man, this just doesn't make uh, doesn't make any sense to me. Can you give me more live experience? So this is just a more live experience that you can see me. This is the same way I'm teaching my students in class. So maybe that it would give you a better understanding just in case your students having a problem, as well as students that are absent. If you're absent, you're going to come in the next day. You're going to check out this video, and I'm going to put you on a computer, and then, boom, you're going to be caught up. So it's not you're lagging behind. You have to go to other students for notes. So today we're working with comparing irrational and rational numbers. It's very important for you to understand what a rational and irrational number is. A rational number is any number that can be written as a fraction. It has to be written in the form of a fraction, a numerator and a denominator. An irrational number is any number that cannot be written as a fraction. So take pi as an example. It's 3.14159265454. It keeps going on and on forever. Um, and no repeating, no pattern, so it's an irrational number. And many of the square roots are irrational numbers. So today we're going to be comparing rational and irrational numbers. So comparing with greater than, less than, or equal to. So let's start off with just an example. And this is the first example I'll do. Comparing the square root of 3 to 1. So I want to compare this. Now the rational number in this problem would be 1. 1 we can write 1 as a fraction by simply writing it 1 over 1. That's the fraction, therefore making it a rational number. The square root of 3 is not uh, a rational number, so we say not, simply meaning it is irrational. So we basically want to get these. Right now we're comparing apples to oranges. These are two different forms, so we really can't say, well, this is greater than this or equal or whatever. We're comparing apples to oranges. So we really want to get it down to apples to apples, oranges to oranges. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to convert this square root of 3, we're going to approximate it as a decimal. And this was the previous lesson before today's lesson. So the way we're going to do that, and we have step, uh, step process. The very first step, and you can see this in your student, and students you can see this in your notes as well. The very first thing is to find the perfect square root that is less than the square root of 3. So the perfect square root that is less than the square root of 3 is the square root of 1. We're going to write that down. Then we're going to skip down a few lines. And we're going to say, well, what is the perfect square root that is greater than 3? And that is 4. This is the first step in approximating irrational numbers. Now we want to find, we want to get a better understanding of what this, where the square root of 3 would, would fall. We know it's going to be, be between 1 and 4 and closer to 3, but we need a better understanding. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the middle number between 4 and 1. And the way we're going to do that is the following. We're going to say 4 minus 1 is 3. So we took the biggest, or the bigger, or the larger square root, and we subtracted the smaller one. 4 minus 1 is 3. The third step is to take this solution. Once I get this, 4 minus 1, I did bigger minus smaller, I got 3. The second, the, uh, third step is to do 3 and divide that solution by 2. 3 divided by 2 will be if I have $3 and I spend half of it, I have $1.50 left. Or 3 divided by 2 is simply 1.5. Now the last step is to do this. To simply take 1.5 and add it to whatever the smallest square root is. Well, 1 being the case right here, I need to add it to 1. So I'm going to do 1.0 and I'm going to add. So 0 and 5 is 5. Bring down the decimal. 1 and 1 is 2. So 2.5. That is not my answer, it's just the middle number between two, between 1 and 4. And I'm going to put a square root sign here. So now, I do know these perfect squares. The, the square root of 1 is 1, because 1 times 1 is 1. The square root of 4 is 2, because 2 times 2 is 4. And square root is asking what one number multiplied by itself will give me that number. So, if this is the exact middle of the square root of 1 and the square root of 4, then the exact middle of 1 and 2 is 1.5. So therefore, this, the square root of 2.5 has to be 1.5. Now, the reason we found that was because now I have a better understanding of where this 
square root of 3 may fall. If I'm looking at this like it's a number line, this would be like the square root of 1. The square root of 1.5 would fall right here. The square root of 2 would fall right there. The square root of 2.5. And the square root of 3 would fall right here past 2.5. So the, the fifth step that students wrote in their notes of the previous lesson was that they drew a line right here. And at that line, they drew a line and they approximated the answer. Okay? Well, the square root of 3 is right past 2.5. And if 1.5 is the square root of 2.5, then it is approximately going to be 1.6. So the square root of 3 is approximately 1.6. Now I've figured this out and I've got apples to apples now. So I can compare 1.6 to 1. And 1.6 is greater than 1. That's the first example of, of the example that we worked on in class. And I'm going to work one problem from the homework assignment. So let me erase this real quick. I'm going to work number two from tonight's homework assignment. Number two on tonight's homework says compare the square root of 7 and 2.1. So compare the square root of 7 compared to 2.1. So now we have apples and oranges. I want to get apples to apples, oranges to oranges. I want to get it in the same form. So I'm going to follow the same steps I've just that I've just done in the previous example. On this, I need to get square root of 7 to a decimal. So the square root of 7, first thing I'm going to do, that very first step, the very first step I'm going to do, I'm going to find the perfect square root that is less than 7. And the perfect square root that's less than 7 is the square root of 4. The perfect square root that is greater than 7 is the square root of 9. That's the very first step, to find these two numbers. So we know that 7 is going to be between these. Okay. So now I'm going to do the second step. I'm going to say 9 minus 4. 9 minus 4, remember, do the biggest, the larger square root minus the smaller. 9 minus 4 is 5. The third step is to divide this number by 2. So I divide that by 2. 5 divided by 2, if I have $5 and I go to Walmart or wherever it may be and spend half of it, I have $2.50 left. Therefore, saying that 5 divided by 2 is 2.5. I'm then going to add 2.5 to the smaller square root, which is 4. So 2.5 plus 4.0 would be 5, and that would be 6.5. So 6.5 is the exact middle between the square root of 4 and the square root of 9. So the square root of 6.5 falls right in the middle of these two numbers. Well, I know this for a fact, that the square root of 2, or excuse me, the square root of 4 is 2. And the square root of 9 is 3. So if 6.5 is the exact middle of the square root of 4 and the square root of 9, then the exact middle of 2 and 3 will have to be the square root of 6.5. And that is 2.5. And you can either check this on a calculator, and you're going to get 2.5 with a lot of numbers, because this is simply an irrational number. So now I can compare. I can draw my line as that next step. So I want to see where would 7 fall at on this, on a, on this vertical scale. 7, if I'm counting, 6, 6.5, 7, 7.5, 8, 8.5, 9. 7 would fall right past 6.5. It would fall right past 6.5. And that's the square root of 7. And I can approximate it. Now, this is not an exact answer, but approximation. It's approximately this. It's approximately 2.6. Now, I can say that because, I, because this is 2.5 and this is 3. Square root of 7 is a lot closer to the square root of 6.5, so it's going to be just past 2.5 and not closer to 3. So this is just an approximation of the answer. So square root of 3 is approximately 2.6. So when comparing the two, 2.6 is greater than 2.1. And that concludes this lesson today. Thank you for the time. Thank you for watching. And I hope this has been helpful. Thanks.